What is up, YouTube? We're back with another YouTube video, and we're here for a Legend Lost Sector Guide for Aphelion's Rest, which you can see is located in the Dreaming City. So if you're going to want to look at that, go to your destinations, go to the right side of your map, and then go to Dreaming City. Spawn, obviously, in the only spawn over here in Davillion Mist. And then I'm just going to show you guys how you can find it. We're just going to get on our Sparrow and go straight over here. And to be honest, it's a pretty decent drive away but as we approach there it's gonna kind of like load you into a new zone but just keep going this way then let's go over here and you can see once you reach the strand just keep making your way past this area towards kind of like that little tower area you can see on the right Then we're gonna reach all the way to the back here. And here you should be able to see this flag and everything. If you do not see this flag here and you don't see the little icon on your map here, that means you haven't unlocked Legend Lost Sectors and Master Lost Sectors for this yet. So what you have to do is go through this tunnel and then you're gonna work your way all the way through here. And then once you reach a certain point, you're going to get Lost Sector discovered. Which hopefully is soon. There we go, Aphelion Dressed. Then you'll just complete the Lost Sector like normal, kill the boss, loot the chest at the end, and then you'll unlock Legend and Master Lost Sectors. So after you do that, you can make your way back outside the Lost Sector. And then start Legend and Master Lost Sectors. So with all of that being said... Uh, we are going to read the modifiers and everything right now. So let's take a look at what we got going on. We have void shields, locked loadout and extra shields, equipment lock, limited revives, overload and unstoppable champions, solar threat, 25% increase to incoming solar damage. So that's damage dealt by the enemies. Uh, Taken combatants generate blight geysers when defeated. Uh, overcharge weapons weapon overcharges from seasonal artifact are active in this activity and kinetic weapons do increase damage when your subclass element matches an active surge solar surge 25% bonus to outgoing solar damage and strand surge is 25% bonus to outgoing strand damage so these two are bonuses that we can use and overcharge shot shotgun which is 25% bonus to shotgun damage so with all that there recommended uh, power is 1830 1815 and above should be fine uh, Enhancement core is uncommon and if completed solo exotic chest armor is rare So with that all being said, we're gonna go into the loadout and then we'll go into the The gameplay so here's the build that we got for this lost sector and we are running solar subclass since we got that solar buff we got blade barrage with marksman dodge triple jump knife trick incendiary grenades on your mark knock them down and then we have ember of searing ember of blistering ember of combustion ember of char and ember of wonder now when it comes to our weapons we got quicksilver storm the pay to win auto rifle as i like to call it and a lot of people in the community mainly because you can only get this i think it was through pre-ordering life well, i'm not sure if you can still obtain it maybe if you buy Super duper collector deluxe edition, maybe, but I'm not 100% sure. But this is what I'm using. If not, you can run like a strand auto rifle if you have this one. But if you don't have it, don't worry about it. You can just put any other auto rifle or uh, weapon in this category to stun overloads, which is a overload auto slash SMG, or you can use a bow. Whatever you want to use is up to you, but I'm using Quicksilver Storm. Mainly for those grenade launcher, uh, you know, grenades that are in there and stuff like that. And the little homing rockets are pretty useful when it comes to DPS. So, Quicksilver Storm is what I'm using. Now, when it comes to my secondary, I'm using a solar scout rifle. And it has adaptive munitions. And what this says is this weapon adapts its damage output and effectiveness against energy shields that don't match this weapon's damage type so like you're going to see in the video we're going to have void shields i'm going to shoot at them with this weapon it's not going to one shot them like if i use a void weapon 
but it will be effective in getting rid of those shields. It's not like before where, you know, if you didn't match the enemy shield type, it was way harder to get rid of it. To be honest, you don't even need adapted munitions, but if it's something you have, cool. If not, you can still brute force shields, whether it be with a nade, whether it be with other weapons. But this is just a little thought that I put into it. It also has shoot to loot, which I'm pretty sure I didn't even take advantage of. But uh, if you have anything with adapted munitions, especially on this scout rifle, I highly recommend trying to keep one of these for end game content. But uh, this is what I'm using. Pretty good option. If not, you can just put on a void scout and you know work your way through the lost sector. But again, whatever you want, use whatever build you're comfortable with. And then when it comes to my heavy, circular logic, and this is mainly just because of that strand buff, but we're also uh, carrying heavy ammo with us, so we can carry a lot of it with the machine gun while doing a good amount of damage. And I actually put up a backup mag just so I can have some extra ammo. If not, you can put like a boss spec and stuff so you can do extra damage against... Actually, I don't know if it's a boss spec, or if it's a major for champions and stuff but whatever spec is good against champions or you can just put on a backup mag whatever you want the backup mag in this case goes from 53 to 63 which and it's not bad it's like 10 extra more shots but i can appreciate that but when it comes to the armor same old armor as before uh, just switching up the siphons and the boost obviously or the surges i should say so ashes to assets gain bonus super energy on grenade kills strand siphon and solar siphon and rapid strand weapon final blows create orbs of power and the same thing for rapid solar weapon final blows uh firepower your grenade final blows create orbs of power and grenade kickstart is when your grenade energy is fully expended you gain grenade energy and then additionally, your armor charge is consumed and you gain additional grenade energy for each stack. I have two of those on. And then we have charged up, which increases the maximum number of stacks of armor charges you can carry by one. And I have two of those on. And then my exotic is Star Eater Scales. And for those who don't know, when you pick up Orbs of Power, you can overcharge your super to times three or times four, I forget. But it pretty much lets you supercharge it to where you're overcharging it, where you do a lot more damage when you're obviously charged up with Feast of Light. Uh, better already, and your health immediately begins to regenerate immediately after picking up an orb of power. Again, we're generating a lot of orbs, we're picking them up. So if you know we're low on health and we see an orb, we can pick it up and it'll start healing me. Uh, solar Weapon Surge and Strand Weapon Surge. Uh, these will give both weapons, respectively, a small bonus to weapon damage while you have an armor charge. And then we have time dilation, and this is your decaying armor charge has a longer duration. We have two of these mods, and this is mainly just to make it last as long as possible. And bomber is reduces grenade cooldown when using your class ability. So that's the build. Again, use whatever you're comfortable with. Use um, anything you want. Don't feel like this is the only setup you have to use, but this is just more of a, you know, I guess, uh, inspired, you know, build or whatever, if you want to call it. Just some way to lead you in the right direction. So that's what I used to get it done. But yeah, if you if you want to, leave me down any suggestions down below for a better loadout and stuff like that. But now we're going to cut over to the gameplay. Now that we spawned in, you're going to just walk straight down here and you can see these ads just a big group of red health bar enemies we're just going to use our pay to win auto rifle here and just get rid of them and you're going to see as we get these kills we're going to have three grenades prepped so we can just use this to help get rid of the enemies here just like that pick up this threadling and kind of just throw it at some of the enemies Now, usually this unstoppable champion starts pushing. There we go. Now I'm gonna stun him and just use my heavy machine gun. See if I can get a finisher off, but it looks like I'm not. Here we go. 
I'm gonna go for the finisher. Now let me grab these orbs. I'd say the only good thing about having taken thrall is like they can't, you know, do damage from range. They only do damage up close. So you can kind of, you know, pick and choose when you want to, you know, do damage to them. But once you reach this part of the room, it's going to be pretty annoying because you're going to have things like these void shields that I'm going to use my adaptive munition scout rifle to break. But you're also going to have these taken scions who are going to try to replicate slash duplicate whatever you just saw it happen right there it's pretty annoying i'm not gonna lie you can see they're just gonna keep doing it there's our unstoppable champion which hopefully doesn't kill me right now there we go i'm gonna just take my heavy out yeah, i'm gonna back up too just in case We got all that going on. Doing some damage. Try to get a finisher off. There we go. I'm gonna reload my. Uh, I don't have my dodge. So I'll try to dodge to reload. But I'll just do the manual reload. Now, here you're gonna see that's that void shield. But with adaptive munitions, you should be fine just like that. You don't get advantage of Shatter Orb, which is. You know, it's not the craziest thing. It's just a seasonal artifact mod that if you matched it, if I used a void weapon to break a void shield, it would generate an orb. But it's not really the end of the world. Yeah, I just knew this guy was going to just start spawning more enemies. I'm trying to get rid of these enemies because they're using stasis and that's going to be super annoying because they're going to try to stun me. And these guys are going to have no problem just shooting at me. So I'm going to try to use this grenade launcher. And I'm going to miss. There we go. Use the damage to that overload champion. Try to stun it. And now I'm going to try to deal with this void shield at the same time. But it looks, looks like he's just going to keep running around. So this is probably the most annoying part. To be honest, I probably just could use my super, but that's uh, not something I feel like doing right now. I mean, look at this guy. What What is he doing? I don't know what he's trying to cook right now. But now that we have this overload champion, we're going to stun it. Use a machine gun. He's healing, which is obviously not good. Get the finisher off. Now let me grab all that heavy. Reload. And now that we've made it kind of, well, not kind of, we're pretty much at the final boss room. We're just going to have more of the duplicating scions and everything, which is annoying. Stop them from duplicating right there with a grenade launcher. See, I'm just trying to get rid of these enemies before I get rid of the overload. And I think after we get rid of this overload, we are going to have our last champion, which is another overload, I believe. But let's just try to get rid of this. We've also been picking up orbs, so we have Feast of Light times four. So I think we should get the one super on the boss and it should kill it. Here you can see the boss is actually spawning. You can see he's gonna go to the right side. I'm just gonna put some damage in now. Actually, I'm gonna do it now because there's a lot of ads behind him. Uh, and more or less one super, but it wasn't perfect. Let's get rid of these scions. And I can just Play for cover, don't try to get too aggressive because then you'll start getting hit by everything at the same time. And you can see there's just spawning more taken, so I'm going to back up here. This is normally where I die a lot if I'm just trying to speedrun it because these enemies are just super annoying. 
You can see that. I, I hate that so much, but now that we did that. Just trying to see if I can hit that. Stun. Use my LMG. Alright, the fact that that champion keeps healing, it's trash. go this guy is harder to kill him than the actual boss but there we go in terms of recommending this whether or not to farm it it's completely up to you you can see i pretty much had like a seven minute run which isn't bad but compared to the ones we've had the last couple days with the edz i wouldn't really recommend it but if you have a better build if you're way more comfortable and stuff then i suppose but I don't know for me just isn't really worth it that much to to grind this one out but hey if this is the only day you got you might as well but you can see six minutes 49 seconds not too terrible not too long not like it took 30 minutes or 15 minutes or anything but again i think with more optimized build or something like that you should be fine but that's gonna do it for the video make sure to like comment subscribe drop a follow on my twitch twitch.tv forward slash monkey sham zero ring the bell so you don't miss another video and i'll see you guys in the next one Peace.